Steven Yanti here with another video, another getting to know you video on our just delivered 1962 Dodge Dart police car. Um, this car came to me from Texas today. I paid 5,000 bucks for it, paid uh, 1,500 to get it shipped across uh, the country to Massachusetts where we are right now. It's very solid, very clean. Now, as we saw in a couple of videos that led up to this one, the floor is not a rotten because of the, the uh, rubber floor mat, but this is a fleet car. It's a police car, code nine in the second spot of the VIN. So no doubt about it. Now up front, we already saw the heavy duty front suspension with the 11 by three inch Hemi Charger specification brakes. First seen on police cars, by the way, the Hemi cars actually use police brakes as seen here. Also, we saw the front anti-roll bar. Now we're gonna explore the rear suspension and see if it has the big brakes and what the leaf springs are at the rear of this thing. They should be heavy duty to match the front. Uh, the car looks very original, so we'll know. But before we do that, I do wanna take one second to explore something that's kind of weird and specific. Uh, some say to Mopars only, but more on that in a second. That is the left-hand lug nuts on the driver's side of the car. Uh, starting in about 1956 or 55, when Chrysler went to stud and nut construction. Before that, they used a bolt instead of a stud and a nut. But from about 55, 56 up to 72, 73, driver's side fasteners are left hand on Mopars. Why? Well, I found this. This is a book that was released about 1963 or so by a thing called the Motor Vehicle Research of New Hampshire Institute. And they actually did a study on left-hand lug nuts and why they are more effective at preventing wheel coming off. So here it says here, wheels with right and left hand threads on wheel fasteners. It says here, some vehicle manufacturers utilize the safe practice of using right hand threads and on studs and nuts to fasten wheels on the right side of the vehicles and left hands on the left side. It says here, it's a fail safe against mechanics leaving your car with light or loosely tightened lug nuts. They actually did some tests on a 57 Chevy four door where they actually intentionally allowed the wheel to leave the car. And what they found is with left-hand lug nuts on the driver's side of the car, the wheel wouldn't come off sooner than later. <laughs> so it's a thing. Uh, and again, uh, seen on the, the driver's side of Mopars. Now here's the other side of that coin. Oldsmobile and Pontiac also used left-hand lug nuts around this same period of time in the 1950s. So it's not just a Mopar thing. General Motors did it too. Now, I haven't seen it on a Chevy ever, but for sure, Pontiacs and Oldsmobiles, like 58, 59, 60, they have left-hand lug nuts, just like a Mopar. So we can pop that balloon. Okay, with that said, we also take a look at this wheel. Earlier, I mentioned this car has the optional 15 by six fleet wheels. Well, what I mean by that is these have a special hubcap, this thing here that pops on like that, and it's held on by one, two, three, four, five of these little riveted tangs. Once this wheel cover is on, it ain't coming off. By contrast, the more convenient conventional way is a wheel like this, which has nubs, one, two, three nubs, which secure the wheel cover in place like that. Well, the thing is on a police car or a taxi, you know, the car might go over a curb or two or three at high speed. Who knows? Roughest kind of use you can imagine. So Chrysler clearly determined that the clip on hubcap was a way to never have the wheel leave the car. So these are the optional, again, 15 by six inch wide uh, fleet wheels. The standard police wheel was a 14 by five and a half, which had the more conventional centers. But this is stuff that's correct for this car and uh, verified you know, by the, uh, the dealer manual that uh, pitched these cars when they were new. And of course, full wheel covers like this puppy here, it's a Chevy piece, but it proves the point. These things, these come flying off cars at the first time you hit a, a curb. Uh, just watch the movie Bullet to see how many hubcaps come off that charger. I think five or six hubcaps come off that car over the course of that chase scene. Okay, now we're gonna focus on one big thing. Does this car have the sure grip limited slip differential? It was an option, it wasn't standard. Now police cars would have had either a 294 or a 323 rear axle ratio. We'll know about more about that in a minute. But what we'll do now is we'll feature, focus on this tire and the other one. I'm gonna turn this tire forward, going forward. If that other wheel turns in the same direction, we got a sure grip. What's it doing? Okay, it's going the other way. This is an open differential. Okay, if both wheels turn at the same direction and they're locked together, that's a sure grip. So this car does not have sure grip. That's a bummer. I didn't know that, but it's okay. We're gonna put one in. Uh, there's lots of places to have your differential converted to sure grip, and we'll be doing that because there's nothing worse than burning the right rear tire. It's lame. Okay, off with the tire. What brakes do we have? Nice, there it is. This is the 11 inch 
I think by two and a half, this is the heavy duty 11 inch drum, which is uh, proof positive. Once again, this is a police car sh for sure with the heavy duty suspension. Um, good stuff. The standard brake would have been a 10 inch, 10 by two or 10 by one and three quarters, something like that. That's the 11 inch big dog. That's good to see. Uh, one thing that's a little bit of a bummer on any 62 through 64 Dodge B body is this. See that nut? That cotter pin, well, that's a two-speed axle or two-speed or two-piece uh, rear axle shaft. In 1965, uh, Chrysler went to a one-piece rear axle shaft with a flange and much easier to service. The trouble with these things, if you want to make, get the brake drum off, you take the cotter pin out, remove the nut, and then use a pulling tool to hopefully get that drum off. Half the time when you do that, the end of the axle shaft gets mushroomed, the threads are bunched, and you've got yourself a problem on your hands. The thing to do is to either bite the bullet uh, and, and go to town with heat and get this thing apart, we'll do that later on, or replace the axle with a 1965 B-body Coronet or Belvedere. And at Berniston Auto Wrecking in Berniston, Massachusetts, in an earlier video, um, I did find a 65 Belvedere with the axle we need. Now, I might go and buy that thing. The only downside, it's a Massachusetts axle, which means it might be pitted like the surface of the moon. It might be rotten and nasty, but it is the axle we want with the one-piece axle shafts. And again, that will have a flat surface here with sort of a concave cup look. But this is the original rear axle. The brakes are great. The 11 inches are cool. That might be a problem. We'll get to that a little later on. Uh, one final detail on these. Now, you won't find a rear anti-sway bar on a Mopar cop car until I think 1974, something like that, uh, at least on a B-body. So don't look for anti-roll bar at the back, but this should have and does have heavy-duty leaf springs. In fact, these have one, two, three, four, five, six leaves. So this is heavy-duty rear springs. And uh, one thing I liked about this car when it first came here, I noticed it sat nice and tall, nice and proud. These leaf springs are not sagged. So we can probably reuse these leaf springs. So that's the story at the back of this thing. Uh, the differential, let's learn one other thing. Which case do we have? There's a 741, small pinion, and a 742, large pinion differential and on this here the driver's side let's break out a wire brush and rub this and see okay 741 yeah I don't know if you can see that Donovan but uh, right in here I'll point to it right right here that that number I don't know if you can see that can you see that at all or come down the back I don't know but yeah here, here you go yeah this thing this area right here right there that says 741 so this is the small pinion which is okay um, probably a 294 axle ratio with no posi or with no shore grip, excuse me. Posi is a GM word. Uh, with no shore grip, we can't determine uh, what ratio. It's probably a 294. Um, that's okay. We'll probably put a 355 in this thing, but we'll get to that a little later on. So in the meantime, yeah, we got ourselves a, a cop suspension, cop brake Mopar. No cop engine. This is the 318, but we'll fix that. Uh, so if you like this video, there's a lot more coming. We're going to follow this car through our repairs, the uh, creation of a 513 Max Wedge, and we're going to make this a four-door Max Wedge tribute. And yeah, Chrysler built a couple of these things with Max Wedge four doors back in the 62. So we'll play along and build a tribute to that. And if you like this video, be sure to subscribe to the Steve Mags YouTube channel. Tell your friends and uh, stick around. We have a lot more coming.